Review! Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> oh god. No, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it without the headphones. Without the headphones. Without the headphones. Alright, we got it. Oh shit! <laughs> Dude, I'm pushing up! We got this. Pack review! Welcome everyone to another episode of Pack Review, the video where I spend money on packs so you guys don't have to. I'm your host, Future Frenzy, because the older Frenzy has some issues with audio. But essentially, the point of the series is in order to make sure that you guys are informed on specific packs or maybe have a little bit of a second opinion in terms on rather if you should buy a pack or not buy a pack. I mean, it's as simple as it gets. But essentially, the way this series works is first, I do pack openings. This time around, it's going to be a little different because, you know, some audio issues and everything. I decided that I'll probably just show some highlights instead of the pack openings this time around and then afterwards just go straight to the review so for those wondering how the score works is that it goes from a rank of five and what goes into the scoring is the aesthetics the usefulness in terms of like the gear just basically they're the same thing usefulness and gear and also the quality of the pack so in instance if there's something that is valuable that's not exclusive from the pack that's essentially things that i'm looking for when it comes towards reviewing every single pack as of recent so hopefully you guys do enjoy and as always remember to stay frenzy uh, not pack gear but like exclusive uh house stuff like for example the um celestial one actually comes with its own exclusive house items which is actually really cool if you're going to give us housing items then you might as well give us you know something that's a little bit more exclusive to the pack so it's a little bit more somewhat in value let's go yo which one is this one which one is this one is this the myth one fudge it's not the myth one but hey we got a mount that's actually pretty pog dude that's pretty pog okay so nothing great I might open a few more, I'm not gonna lie, because I really do want to go for this myth mount. I want- Oh, there we go! We got one of the pets. Nice. Oh, and it has a uh, life fuel. That's actually really good. So, there's the storm and life one once again. And we're gonna open until we get to 5k. Wow! <laughs> Look at this! Yeah, one day. One day. Seven day. And we at least got the other pet, which is really awesome. So, as long as I get the, uh, the last pet, I should be pretty- pretty good i should be pretty good all right come on give me the per mount give me the per mount from myth come on okay yep uh that's great thanks i appreciate it well i got a hat <laughs> i don't think i've got the hat before maybe i have a, i just probably don't remember <gasps> wait wait oh is this the same one that's the same one. Oh my god Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, hey, I got a permanent mount. Cool. But, like, I wanted the myth one. <laughs> so, as you can tell, I'm hella addicted now, <laughs> which is bad. But, like, I really want this myth mount, dude. Like, we got uh, four pages, and that's, like, what, 16 packs? And then plus one, it's like a 17 pack. So we gifted ourselves 17 packs from a side character that uh, she just had a couple of crowns just laying around. So I was like, you know what? Let me get some packs, you know. Might, might as well <laughs> for the video, you know, for the content. It's for the content, bro. That's my excuse for everything, dude. It's like, it's for the content. Don't worry about it. It's just for the content. And let's see. Ooh, if I get this mount one more time as the perm, I am going to be heated because there is no way you can get the same mount three times. I mean, I probably just rolled it on snow already. It's like, here lies Frenzy getting the same mount three times in a row. And uh, yeah, he's not happy. That's his uh, cause of death here, is getting the same mount three times in a row. But let's see, come on, just give me the pet. That's all I need. It's like at least a pet to complete a set. And I don't really care too much for the prayer mount. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Oh, yes. Let's freaking go. Yes! Finally! A permanent mount that's not like the same storm and 
storming life one. I, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy about that. Now, if I can just get the pet that goes uh, with the myth and ice, I'll be pretty satisfied with it. Oh my god, Ace Fossil Avengers, once again, strikes back. And come on, just give me the pet, dude. Just give me a pet. Give me a pet that goes with the myth and ice. I'm, I'm very certain that there, there should be one. <laughs> Finally, was it so hard? <laughs> was it so hard? Was it so hard to give me this pet like a bajillion years ago? Finally, I got a pet that completes the set now. Oh my lord. I am definitely not showcasing this whole pack opening because there's like a lot of it. And at this point, I'm just going to embarrass myself as to like how much money I spent just to get this one damn pet. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's actually go over some of the aesthetics. Obviously, we're showcasing stats, and we're also going to be talking about the spell elements that come from this pack. And overall, spoiler alert, it's a decent pack. Aesthetically, looks absolutely amazing. I will showcase every single aesthetics here. As for the mount, looks absolutely gorgeous. I think it's really cute, and it matches very well with the gear. Now, let me actually take off the webcam because I will have to showcase a lot of stuff and I need the webcam off for the meantime. And if we were to showcase a little bit of the gear, as you can see, looks really good. Again, everyone has their own personal opinions about gear, looks. I personally think it looks good, especially because of the skull or skeleton kind of feel to it. It gives you vibes of like the Grim Kalaka enemies from Azteca. Overall, probably one of the better Azteca aesthetics gear. And you have the little dinosaur here that actually matches the mount in terms of like the scales, design, and everything. Now, obviously, slightly different color, but still pretty similar in scale design. The only thing I don't like about this wand, though, it's like the one thing I don't like about the aesthetics is the wand. Because I think it looks good. I just feel like it's a missed opportunity to not have the jewel effect on the eyes as well. If that was the case, easily would have been one of my more favorite two-handed wands out there. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. But it's okay. You know, you can't have everything. Now, let's showcase you guys the other gear sets. We have the Storm. I mean, not, not the Storm one. It looks Storm, but it's not Storm. It's the Myth and Ice one. Looks good. I absolutely love this one because I'm a sucker for purple and gold. I'm biased because I'm a Lakers fan, so purple and gold is my thing. And as you can see for the gear, again, really nice color scheme with the purple and gold. I think this is one of my favorite looking pets as well of all the three because I just love that purple and gold scheme to it. Looks really good. And like, the, like I said before, the wand, just missed opportunity, but still looks pretty good. And finally, for the last set being the life and storm set, looks very pretty. I actually got a permal in this, which is really cool. I got a permal in this one and the fire version, so easily going to be able to increase my stats quite a bit. So it's going to be awesome. And in terms of like just how the gear looks, we have this look right here. Probably one of my least favorites because I just do not like the dark green color to it. I do like the wand though. I like the fact that it actually has a pink aura to it. That's actually really cool. But and I love the pet. But in terms of just like the gear itself, I am just not a fan of the green. But that's just me. In terms of stats though, let's actually showcase you guys some of the stats. Here's the hat. Here's the robe. By the way, you can pause if you want to to see the stats a little bit better. Here's the boots. Here's the wand. It actually comes with Maycast Leaf Storm, which is pretty good. You know, obviously not a make it break it type of May cast, but I will get into how you would probably prefer to use these ones in a second. And then we have the Scaly Frillosaur, which comes with the life fuel. And this is a reason why I think that life probably has one of the better ends in terms of going for the stat upgrade, just because of the fact that they're able to use their card pretty effectively because of the life fuel. Now, in terms of the gear set, Here's the gear set bonus right here, and as you can see, you have the damages that are very easy to do because the mount is considered part of the set. So all you need in order for you to get the gear set but not sacrifice your stats too much, if at all, is go for the mount and then go for the pet, and that alone gives you everything you need in terms of the damage upgrade. Now let's go for the the fire one i keep saying fire and ice because it looks fire and ice in a way but it's not fire and ice it's actually fire ice uh fire death and balance 
And here's the hat for this one. Here's a robe for this one. Here are the boots for this one. Here's the wand. It actually comes with Maycast Meteor Strike. And finally, with the pet, which is kind of funny because it's actually an ice spell, but for some reason, you know, it's an ice spell or a balanced death and fire set, which is weird, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. And finally, the last set we're going to be going over is this one, which th this will actually have the comparison in the stats because I actually have stuff to compare it to. And this is probably the most important part of the video for you guys because you guys want to know as to why is it worth or not worth and how can you utilize it to your best advantage. Now, for the hat, we can compare it to the Dragoons. Right away, you can already tell that Dragoons is better. The reason why it's better is because you get more stats out of it. And if you're taking gear bonuses to consideration, as you can see for gear bonuses, right when you get at least like three sets of this, which you will, which is the hat, boots, and the ring, you'll be able to overtake any any gear set that you'll get compared to this. So not only that, but if you're just looking at it just briefly, you know, you get that accuracy upgrade. If you just switch from this to Dragoons, you get the Pierce upgrade, a slightly damage upgrade, and the Pip Chance, which is probably the most important part. Because the thing about Pip Chance, just like in PvP, in PvE, it's important to get fairly close to 100 or at 100% Pip Chance, because you don't really want to fail Pip in PvE generally. Same thing for PvP. And even with some slight upgrades that come from this, I just don't think it's great overall compared to Dragoons, which I'm glad because Dragoons needs to say to be like the best gear overall for a long period of time because of how hard it is to get it in the first place. Now, in terms of the Safari gear, here's the comparison for the Safari gear. Now, again, same ordeal to Dragoons. The power up chance is literally the main thing that makes me want to have this over this but what i will say is with the gear set bonus if you were to get that gear set bonus you at least have one more damage compared to this in a way but again the power prep chance is really what just overtakes this over this and it's the same situation with dragoons let's talk about the boots for a second now obviously in comparison dragoons is better in so many ways but you could consider probably going for this in PvE only because of the fact that if you were to just not have Dragoons and you needed to get yourself a pretty decent Dragoons replacement for the meantime, this actually might be good. Obviously, you do lose some power poop chance, but again, this is like power poop chance that you could probably, you know, fly by with it just a little bit. And you obviously get a slightly more crit, you get slightly more da uh, slightly less damage, but the, with the gear bonus you get pretty much fairly similar damage, or if not, uh, slightly more. And that's actually pretty solid. And you get accuracy from this too, which is pretty good, and slightly more health. Now, if I was to compare this to Savannah's, as you can see, this is automatically a better upgrade compared to Savannah's only because of the gear set. Since Savannah or any Safaria gear doesn't really come with the gear set, and once you get the gear set, you pretty much will be on par with this set in terms of damage. The only thing being is that you'll have more crit, you'll have slightly more accuracy, and you'll have more health. So right then and there, automatically a better replacement compared to this if you're able to get the gear set pretty easily. If you can't get the gear set pretty easily, then obviously Savannah is the better end of the deal. And finally, let's actually talk about the wands for a second. Now, for the wands, we're gonna actually compare this to both the Sinbad wand and the, the Neon Axe wand, because I'm gonna talk about as to why I think this one is good for PvE, but not PvP. Now, for PvP, this is actually one of the ones you might wanna rock. Again, most people tend to rock Sinbad, which I will compare to that in a second. As you can see, this is great, because of how it's pretty much similar in stats but the difference is is that in pvp damage and pierce are probably the more important stats overall obviously shadow pit rating became pretty important but they both have the same shadow pit rating so it's not really a great comparison to see which one's better but in terms of the fact that this one gives pierce automatically makes this a better one compared to this one because with critical decay and everything and also with the fact that critical heals are nerfed 
there really is no point of trying to get towards max critical. Obviously, it is still kind of important to get a little bit of critical, a decent amount of it, to where you can crit pretty decently. But, at the same time, you also want to have pretty good offensive stats that are beyond crit, which is damage and pierce. And the fact that this gives pierce automatically makes it better than this wand. Now, if we're comparing it to Simbad, well, we have the Capadons for comparison. As you can see, you get slightly less damage, but keep in mind that Simbad doesn't have a gear bonus. So once you get the gear bonus, it will pretty much overtake this one in a heartbeat. And again, the fact that you don't have Pierce for PvP is pretty much an issue. So obviously this is better than this one just because of the Pierce. In terms of like the critical, this one gives slightly more critical than this one. But here's the thing. The fact that this doesn't give Shadow Pit bonus and this doesn't give shadow pit bonus the simbat doesn't and the fact that it doesn't have a gear set automatically makes this better for pve arguably now if you can happen to get away with having slightly less critical but, but still being able to get towards a hundred percent or very close to it then you're pretty much solid you can technically and arguably rock this one and rock the mount at the same time or rock this wand with the pet and be able to get yourself a pretty nice upgrade on your pve stance and the fact that you have more shadow pip rating is going to be even better because you get more shadow pips a lot more often in pve rather than you do pvp so the thing now is not only is damage important not only is critical important but so is shadow pip rating for pve just because you want to be able to get your shadow pips pretty frequently since they're probably like your best spells during the time that are easy to cast and it's just a really good one actually if we're talking about pve sense we can actually argue that this is a good one for pve so that's just my personal opinion on the one in general and for the pet we have a uh, shark as a spell for this one again not too important but it's there now, finally, let's actually talk about the Spellements for a second. We're gonna go for this briefly because this there's not really much special things about it. We have Scarab, which is the same thing like any other rank one spell writing kind of tier. You can either go for slightly more damage, or it's basically set damage, but more accuracy, or more potential damage, but the same accuracy. I personally prefer the bottom tier, just saying. Now, we have Fire Elf as well. And this one doesn't really have any sort of change. Now, the problem with the Fire Elf spell writing tiers is that there's really nothing different about it except the fact that you can transfer between if you want the initial hit to be stronger or if you want the overtime to be stronger. So essentially, it's asking would you like a better finisher or would you like a better pressure kind of spell, offensive pressure kind of spell. And it really just depends on the person. I personally think that having the original fire elf is just as good if not better so the thing is is that if you were to compare this to reindeer knight reindeer now has the same concept but at the very least they gave reindeer knight a slight bit of a damage increase in order to you know make it seem like it's still an upgrade of some sort so that's good but they didn't really do that with fire elf and if we're comparing it to many other rank 2 spells for lightning bats at least it gave the option to have more damage overall in terms of like every other spell like scorpion at least gave utility snow serpent utility or damage leprechaun utility or damage troll literally damage or extremely good utility this is like one of the most broken utilities out there for sure and for fire elf it's just nothing special really so Honestly, I will not go for this pack just to get yourself spellaments, because the spellaments for this, in my opinion, are just not worth it at all. Now, you're probably wondering now at this point in the video as to what I think about the pack overall. I think that this pack is actually pretty good aesthetically. I think that aesthetically is one of the best key features of this. Uh, the gear set is definitely extremely easy to have, which makes it arguably pay the win, which I will go a little bit more on the tangent on that right now, actually, because here's the thing. So, with all these recent packs recent, like as of recent, they all have some sort of pay to win element to an extent. Sinbad was pretty pay to win because of how one of the wands 
was exclusively one of the best ones for death ever and there hasn't really been one that comes extremely close to it now yeah arguably kind of but not in the sense of how it was for Sinbad for death wizards now the Spellmental Warriors the fact that you have the gear set that gives you universal resist is pretty insane you have the Skyrim's pack giving you the turquoise gear for the Nova strategy which again is kind of at a um, hiatus but you know it will come back sometime in the future for sure you have stuff like the uh like the celestian pack where it literally gave you exclusive spells that is only obtainable through this pack only you can't farm it you can't craft it, you can't do anything with it you can only buy packs hope that you get enough spell elements in order to get the spells exclusively and even then they had some really good wands that were great for pvp the Islanders pack, which came with the troll spell element, which is extremely broken for many reasons because how Myth is a great shield breaker, it's a shield manipulator, and that alone gives them much momentum. The troll spell element gives them much more unnecessary, you know, momentum that they pretty much just didn't really need at the time. Now, am I glad that Myth is in the top tier? Yeah, sure. I'm a Myth main at the end of the day, but still if you really think about it critically you can already tell that's a fairly broken spell element overall and in this one the most pay the win thing about this is how the gear set is so easy to obtain by just having the mount and a pet and really the only thing you're sacrificing then is not being able to use a specific pet card that you want which is literally nothing at the end of the day you can live without having to use a pet card and it's insane because now you're going to see so much people in PvP that will have the same mount and the same pet every single time because of the fact that they have that damage bonus that's super easy to obtain. And not only that, but there's not really any sort of like repercussions that are serious to where you don't necessarily sacrifice too much in your stats like you're literally sacrificing nothing the only thing you're sacrificing is a card which is nothing it doesn't affect your stats it just affects maybe like being able to get that card but that's literally nothing in the grand scheme of things and in pve if you want to have the best of the best sets well this one is arguably going to be what you need to get some of the best pve stats overall now is it a really big issue um i don't know like i feel like it's definitely a lot more like of an issue in the competitive scene but in terms of the pve scene i could definitely see how pve players are pretty angry about the fact that how pay to win this pack is on both sides of the spectrum so that really does say something however this review is not going to be based on how pay to win it is this review is going to be based on how i think about the pack in terms of how i think about the pack like I said before, aesthetically, it's amazing. And in terms of the gear sets, that's literally the only reason why I think it's a decent pack. But the problem with this pack is if you don't have anything that comes from this pack exclusively, you're basically getting pretty bad drops. But because of how good it is aesthetically and because of how good the gear set is, it's the only thing that's really saving this pack overall and the ones are pretty arguably good for pve as well because of the fact that you get shadow pip rating so with all that in mind i'm giving this pack a three out of five it's a decent pack and i do think it's ex extremely pay to win and unfortunately as much as i would like to say that this trend will not keep going I will be lying to you this trend will definitely keep going for sure overall i hope that you guys did enjoy this video make sure to leave a like subscribe if you haven't we have 55 subscribers left for a thousand subscribers overall so i really would appreciate it if you guys happen to leave a subscription to this channel with the bell notifications and as always remember to stay frenzy peace